Hey, good morning. Um, we're going to continue to, um, we only like start a really brief about inheritance or chapter 13 of our textbook. Um, so we're going to dedicate this to, for you to actually see how the most simple, but also the most commonly used cases for um, single inheritance in, um, object oriented language or any, any object oriented language, including C++. So as I mentioned, one should view um, inheritance naturally as a concept called is a, is a relationship. Is a relationship means that um, a, a student is a person or a teacher at UC Davis is a member of UC Davis community or um, a particular um, size or particular shape of object is a box or something like that. You can, you can go say a uh, baseball is, is a sport, for example. So you can see that in our society uh, is a relationship, is, can represent a lot of the um, abstraction and specification about the, the object we, we care. So just, just start with that if a class has only one is a relationship to a super class, that is called um, um, single inheritance. If a class has multiple is a relationship to more than one super class, then that's usually we call multiple inheritance. Um, in C++, they further split the concept in multiple inheritance into both multiple inheritance and virtual inheritance as how it handle software development issue. Okay, not, not abstraction, but software development issue. You will see the difference between um, multiple inheritance and virtual inheritance really in C++ is just about how the memory, how the object are being um, um, allocated. And, and it's interesting difference, but we won't talk about that until probably the second or third lecture, as well as your homework assignment number four, you'll have a chance to do that. All right. but. At this moment, we're looking at the single inheritance. Single inheritance means that any one class has only one super class. Okay, so I show you this figure. This shows both single and multiple inheritance in this graph. You can see that, for example, a student is a community member, an employee is a community member, because if you look at class student, class, Alumnus, employee, they only have a one parent class or super class in this case. So they are single inheritance. But an administrative teacher is a multiple inheritance because it actually has inherited from two um, classes. One is administrator, one is teacher. And when you have this, it's, it's, it's actually surprising. If, if you think about that, if, if you remove administrator, teacher, then essentially everything in this picture is a single inheritance. That is a one level of complexity. But when you add this in, surprisingly, it actually complicates a lot of things. A lot of things is not just about modeling, but it's also talk about programming. It makes things a lot harder to handle because you have multiple inheritance. Okay, we will get to that, which is, I just want to warn you, uh, give you a heads up, is that that's why I feel if you don't need to use multiple inheritance, you really shouldn't use it because it complicates uh, not just about 
the complexity of the scenario, it will actually impact the performance as well of a, of a, of a, of a runtime environment. I'll, I'll show you that, which is quite surprising. Okay, so let's actually take a look at, uh, let's see, this is the slide. Yeah, I want to use this slide for my first example. So, so now I want to ask after we understand what is a single inheritance or is a, is a relationship. So now let's actually look at how we can represent the relationship linguistically in C++. So first, let's look at the top part. The top part is a superclass. And the superclass, you don't have to do anything. This is the this is the class that we have been talking about uh, several times. So this is a parent class. Parent class shouldn't worry about what's actually in the in the child class or 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 the descendant class. Um, it just define it is as it is. Okay. By the way, what I just said is not one hundred percent true. Later, we'll see that, in fact, sometimes when you design the parent class or super class, you have to consider what might be inherited, what might be the child class, but let's not get to the complicated case first. So let's look at the simple one. For the, um, for the class box, I still have that double uh, length, width, height, and then with all the constructor, with all the uh, member functions. The only thing we need to change in the um, parent class is I change that private to protect. So now this is the first time you saw that keyword protected in the beginning of the class definition box here. I changed that. So what's the difference if I put private and the protected is that, um, if I put private, then any member function of the child class cannot directly access the private variable. On the other hand, if you put it in the protected, which means that it's going to be private for any other class in C++, but it will be private both to its own class as well as its descendants. Okay, exactly. Let me repeat it again. The difference between private and protected is private. Remember, when we, what, what is a private? Private means that only this class can access this variable directly. Remember, we have that um, big discussion about whether it's a, it's a per object SS right or per class SS right. And, and we realize that C++, who even my surprise, is actually per class SS right for the private protection. And um, for other object the language, it might be per object, depending on what language we're, we're doing. But here, we're saying that the protected is saying that we extend that private uh, area to not just its own class, but also all the class that inheriting from this class box. Okay, that's the only thing you need to change. In fact, it's your design, whether you want the uh, child class to actually be able to access to that. That's your choice. Okay. All right, now that, that part is uh, um, a super class. Now we're looking at the uh, child class, the descendant. We call it carton. This is, by the way, this is an example from the textbook. And let's look at the keyword. So first I said class carton, that's I define a new class. And now this is a new syntax. That after this, you have a column, and then you have a public. I will explain what's the public, because you, not only you can put public here, you can put uh, protected here as well. You can put public, protected, I think you can, yeah, you can also do private. But most of the case, we actually use public, okay? So um, later we'll see that the, we'll compare. If you put different keyword, what does that mean? 
in the in the there was a combination a table about this relationship between that keyword you use here to define that inheritance relationship and also which variable you can access in the parent class that's essentially try to um, um, specify okay so now we say class carton column public box so this is essentially what i'm saying is that i'm going to inherit i'm going to define a carton which is a single inheritance to this class box using the public relationship with the parent class okay from now on if i don't say anything it's going to be default to be public i'm going to not specify the word public again but you know it has to be there so basically this define the relationship why i say it's a single inheritance because after the column you only have a one super class being specified after the column sign if you have a multiple inheritance then you're going to put common and put more class there okay you will see that some of the example of multiple inheritance later so that's why when i saw that i know it's a single inheritance it's only one super class okay which is good okay so now let's look at it the same thing after you define this class then essentially you have your private you have your public area you have your private you have a public area you you might have a protected area as well because you might also be a super class of some other class because it could go as deep as you want all right so so that's that's essentially the only thing you need to worry about in this relationship is the constructor so you can see that this, there is a constructor and the rest of the member at the moment is going to be the same and later when we talk about polymorphism there's another thing called virtual function we need to worry about because the virtual function is the uh, relationship between the super class and the child class and its behavior I, I think virtual function is the most useful uh one of the most useful concepts in c plus plus but probably the most difficult concept to understand. If you, if you think about, I don't know your take in, because some of you already take a, a programming in C. What, what do you think is the most difficult concept in C to understand? What do you think programming in C? Yes, pointer, right? So pointer address, that's the most challenging concept in C. In C++, in my opinion, it's just, different taste. Virtual function is the most difficult concept to understand because it's essentially pointer to function. Still pointer is a pointer to function. And it, it, look, it looks like you're calling a function, but it's not calling that function you think you're calling. That's what the, the virtual function is because it redirects you through pointer or function to something else, which is, um, it's, it's a powerful concept, but it's, it's actually, uh, by the way, it's not as evil as the C pointer, but it's, it's, it's really hard to understand, just to let you know. Okay, so now I want to show you this, just graphically what what is is doing. So essentially what we're looking at is this picture. So the top is the base class, is the box. And the derived class is essentially the, um, the, the carton. So what, what we really have is, is like this picture. You, you can see that your base class has a public or you have a private area. But the thing is that as if you specify something as protected, that means the derived class can also access that area. So essentially we have things looks like this. And in terms of access, I just want to let you know that um, as I say, if it's protected, yes, the child can access. If it's private in the parent class, then sorry, you cannot do that. Okay, all right, that, that's what we just showed you the code and show you the access boundary between a single inheritance relationship. Okay, before I talk about constructor, any question? Yes, please. So a child class,
Uh, yes, yes, let me repeat that. Good question. Okay, so let's actually take a look at this. This is, uh, so if, if a base class has some uh, private attribute, private attribute, which private means nobody else from this class, from this base class can access to that, right? So, so which means that if I actually create a derived class, which is a child class, if the parent class still could be private, then the child class cannot access to that. Okay, so, so it's like a, I'm a teacher, I'm a human, but when I inherit from human based class, I cannot access my brain anymore. My brain is private. So in other words, I want to make my brain to be protected. When I make it protected, it means that all the derived class can direct access to the element in the in the base class, which is like a my brain in the exam. Does that illustration help you understand a little bit the difference between protected and the private that I need to specify as base class? Yeah. Yeah. So let's say you made a derived class from the derived class. Okay. And could the the second derived class access also the protected one or no? Yes. Yes, you can still do that. Assuming it's all public, uh, remember I use that keyword public, right? In the inherited, if, it, if, if the first level the right class is a public box, and the second level they also do public keyword to say carton, right? Then it's the same thing they can ask. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Yes, in the back. So Yes. So if it's a protected in the in the base path, in the root of the whole tree, if if you make that protected, means that any derived class in the whole tree, second level, third level, or 200 level down there, they can all access to that variable directly. If any of the class in the chain make a private, then you can because you can actually control that. But by default, once it's protected, everything is protected. Any other excellent question, by the way? Yes. Means that if you find protected, say the box is protected, right? That you're protected. So um, this direct class, public box. And the other direct class, public carton. And the other direct, so, so you can go this, go down 200 level, which means that every single member of the, of the, any one of the 200 classes will be able to access to that uh, private variable because it's protected. Okay, any question? So think about a different way. Um, I start to use some of the uh, C syntax here, okay? So, well, I, it's not syntax, I'm talking about C concept. When you define a struct, the struct in C, you actually, especially if you're doing a dynamic memory allocation with malloc. So you can think about in C, you have to just find memory space to hosting that particular struct whatever that stock represents. And then we use the same concept when you actually create a, um, a object from box, you have to create enough memory for that object box. Okay, that, that's basically uh, up to this point, before inheritance, you know about how memory need to be allocated in order to support the concept of object from a class. So you know that, I assume you know that. Um, so now this is a little bit different. When you have a derived class, essentially your memory allocation is all the way to the top of the super class. Because essentially when you inherit a class, you're not just creating your own stuff, but you are actually responsible for actually allocate memory also to your super class. And if that super class has another super class, 
you actually go all the way to the top. But remember, I answered your question. I said there was 200 deep. So essentially, the leaf node, when they create an object, they essentially create 200 objects because you need memory space to, to support all of them. Because all of them, when you do inheritance, is actually part of the object you just created. So that, that's, that's, that's important, right? I mean, um, so let me repeat the concept again. So from language perspective, I'm using this column public to box. This is just showing that my S is right to a variable in the, in the super class or, or, or base class. But when you really create an object using new or using this static allocation, and remember, because of that relationship, your memory is no longer just yourself. It's actually your, your parent uh, object or whatever. It's all there. So, so number one, you know, you must create multiple space for that. The second concept is even probably more important for C programmer is that all this memory is going to be packed and put it together. So this is what we call object-oriented memory layout. This is the first time you learned about this. Using Java, using uh, Python, you never need to worry about memory layout. But C programmer, C++ program, you need to understand what's memory layout. So memory layout means that I will allocate a big chunk of memory which is sufficient enough to host every single object in that inheritance chain. Why is matter to C programmer? Because C has this very risky design called pointer, which when you move it, you actually can move it to your parent class as well, if, if your program requires you to do that. Okay. All right. So why I actually talk about memory because remember, when we create an object, I said there's something called constructor. So the constructor is essentially saying when you want to use an object, you need to set the value to be the initialized value you want to have. So now we're in a different situation because of the inheritance. So as I said, you have all the memory layout for the object, not just for yourself, but for all the base class above you. So essentially, you have all the memory there allocated to you, and you need to initialize all of them. And therefore, the constructor is going to be a chain reaction. It's not just say like, oh, I create a box, I only call the default constructor of box. No, you have to actually call every single one along the chain all the way to the top in the single inheritance case. Okay, so, so let me actually use this as an example. Assuming, let, let's, let's worry about single inheritance. Assuming I'm a teacher. So a teacher is a faculty. A faculty is an employee. And the employee is a community member of UC Davis. So you can see that when I create a teacher object, I'm actually creating four objects. Teacher object, faculty object, employee object, and UC Davis community object. I actually create four objects instead of one object. So I have, when I say create, I really have memory space to be sufficient to host all four objects when I want to create a teacher object. Okay, I'm here. Based on what we learned so far, we know there are four constructors need to be involved, right? There are four constructors because each of the object has a constructor to um, build up your object, and each of them will have a destructor when you want to destroy this object uh, teacher. So my question to you is that if there are four objects to, four constructor to call, which one do you think should be called first? Based on this, this tree. 
which constructor? Constructor of teacher, constructor of faculty, constructor of employee, or constructor constructor of community member? Yes. So the first one, we always go to the top, right? Because as, uh, what's your name again? Nico. As Nico said, maybe the child class, depending on the parent class. So therefore you want to make sure the parent class is ready before you actually do anything with the child class, right? I mean, I need to initialize the brand as a community member before I actually even start to think as a teacher. Right? That's 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 uh, just an analogy about why we need to do that in the top. So if it's constructor, we always go with the top. From the top to the down in this inheritance hierarchy. This is, by the way, we call it inheritance hierarchy. It's sometimes we call it class hierarchy, representing the relationship, not all the classes that we have. Okay, so a related question. If I want to destroy an object means destructor. There are also four destructors in this case. Which one should we call first? Oh, let's change somebody else. Yes. Teacher class, that's correct. What's your name? Michael. Michael, okay. So Michael is saying that we want to start with the, the, the bottom one. Because why? Because if you destroy the, um, the community member, you destroy my brain, and and I have no way to think how I'm going to be destructive. Things like that. Okay, so we're going to see that there is older constructor come from the top, destructor come from the bottom. Okay, so now let's look at the code. Now you can probably appreciate this code a little bit better. So now let's look at constructor code. So constructor code inside this has a it's a carton. So carton, you can see that carton actually take three, oh, sorry, four arguments. One, two, three, four. It takes four arguments. And you can see that now we have a syntax again as a column. And then it's actually going to call box, this one, and then it's going to call material or use uh, bracket initialization notation. So let's actually interpret what, what's going on. If you understand this example, you essentially know everything you should know about single inheritance. You can do a lot of powerful things already. So think about first, why is box? Box is actually the constructor you try to call over there in that line. I mark it as a red. So I know it's a super class, so I'm actually going to call my super class constructor. So this is going to call that super class, not just call that, but also with argument, with three arguments. Remember, I have three box constructor. Which one I should be called? Well, depending on how, as a child class, how I actually put the variable here, because where's this variable lb, wd, hb is actually from here. So the compiler will see, okay, you try to call the constructor with three parameters. All three of them are double. And I check only that match. The first constructor match with three double. Perfect. I directly go to call that. Okay. So the first thing when you call this carton is actually going to call this constructor before you call the constructor for carton. By the way, here is the constructor. This, this is just a toy example about the body part of the constructor for carton. So before you even ask you this function, you're gonna ask you anything that's actually being specified after that column. So, so anything between this column and the body of the constructor need to be executed before you can actually touch the constructor. That was the older why we say you have to do the parent part before you do that. So you actually first, you call the parent constructor. Then you actually, this one is, is not an inheritance. This one is just using bracket initialization to initialize a, the value of a private member of this class 
because um, you can see that there was a string called material, and the material is a private member of this class. So they basically do a, a um, um, value initialization for that. And where do you get a parameter? You use ESC. Where I got the ESC is here. So there are four arguments, three called the parent class, one to initialize my own private member, but in that order, this one first, and then this one. And then I'm actually going to um, call the real function to do whatever I want to do in the construct, okay? Any question with this single inheritance case? Yes, please. Yes. What? All of them are classes. Yes, in the single inheritance. Right. This is an exception. This is called multiple inheritance. Well, both of them are single inheritance, right? Single inheritance means they have an error going up, right? Is that is that your question or what was your question about? In a single inheritance case. Right. So, so let me clarify. Let me let me clarify this. I said in C plus plus when we do inheritance, in C plus plus doesn't um, how do I say that? They don't say you cannot use multiple inheritance. So they allow you to use whatever inheritance you like, multiple or single. So the difference is that single has only one superclass, multiple has only one. That's the difference. I, I kind of discourage everybody to use multiple inheritance because I just give everybody a warning is that multiple inheritance sometimes is much, much harder to manage the top set and the software uh, program. So I will explain later when we talk about multiple, we will still talk about multiple inheritance. And let's say um, the sad thing is that if you're a Java programmer or other programmer, when you look at the multiple inheritance, C++, um, actually they are not exactly the same. That's, that's kind of another level of computation. Yeah. It could, because people misunderstood multiple inheritance, sometimes uh, they're blocked because of that uh, situation. Does that answer your question? Okay, thank you. Any other question? Yeah, so let me see the question in the back. Yeah, go ahead. This three variable is going to be used to match with the, the uh, construct on the top. Oh, no, 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 sorry, no. So that 1.0 is the default value, but I'm actually calling the the first constructor box through this line. We talk about this line. Then you're actually passing the three variables, LV, WV, HV. And how, where I get those values, not 1.0, is actually get it from whatever called the constructor of Carton. So as a programmer, I'm actually calling Carton as a constructor. But from that constructor, some of the parameter might be used to uh, call the, the constructor from the other class. Yeah, so, so let's say you have, let's say box is a child. So you have shape, box, or carton. Uh -huh. So it would go in the uh, constructor 
burning for the carton, and then so the golden and the box is all cheap. Uh, it really depends on whether you're using, assuming we're doing single inheritance, single inheritance, then most likely it's going to be carton box like this. Inside box, they will have a box column shape. Usually it's a chain reaction. You have a question? Uh, Nicole? Oh, okay. Yes. Right. Okay. So in the carton, I have another constructor here. This constructor, it didn't call box. With that three variable, guess what it's going to call? It's going to be called default constructor of box. So in this case, I didn't actually, I don't have this column box, right? But the box still be allocated because the memory has been allocated. So it means that its constructor need to be called. So therefore, in this case, even though I didn't say box, the default constructor, the third constructor will be called because there is no argument. So, so that one is implicit, and you will always get called. In any that will be Yes, exactly. Right. So in some sense, this example give you the situation that sometime when you construct a uh, child class, you have to actually consider how to call the parent because the value of that problem that need to be set up. And then sometime, let me just give you an example. Remember I said 200, a chain of 200 uh, superclass subclass. When you go down to the lead of that 200 level, the, if you really want to do things right, the parameter list here could be huge. Because you have to input every single value all the way to the top, and sometimes uh, that's not pleasant. So, so we don't do two hundred level in reality. My re my reality, I probably deal with like seven or eight level. That's what we really want for, for my case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you're, you're asking a question which I, I never tried, which means that I potentially put a constructor inside a protected area and put it in the private area, right? So you're saying that, if I understand your question correctly, it's usually we put the constructor in the public area since it's only uh, local. That could be accessible by anybody, but you actually put a constructor in a protected area, which is wow, a really strong way. Today, be careful, especially when you walk. I'm serious. Today, be careful when you walk under the tree or something. Um, the, the branch might might break. You don't know. Hard to do. Sounds like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't you know. A few months ago, just to share with you, I'm, I'm afraid it's being recorded. That I actually asked the, 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 the city worker to, to help me to trim the tree in my front yard. Uh, they never come until a woman was killed in Davis near Slide Hill Park because of the tree. We can Google it. And then we realized that this is a serious problem. Then they actually do a lot of it. This is a budget cut. And uh, they they have a, I mean I understand they have great people but they are have such a cut and they just so just be careful because not just in on campus okay, in the city of Davis that some of the trees has not been trimmed appropriately while being in we have a wind like this it break a little bit you don't know whether the Bird or coyote just jump on that in my backyard. I have a raccoon. They have just add some weight to that. And then, and, uh, 
Just be careful, all right? So, sorry, I kind of, but no, no, I understand. So, I, I think, the, um, I, I never tried that, but it's a good idea to put a special constructor in the protected area, and that's only be called by the child class with the construction. They, they, I think that's a that's a good idea. I can think about some good application for that. I'm just never I never actually write a single line of code. It's worth trying. Okay. All right. Any other question? Yes, please. Say this one. Yeah. Okay. So, do you know STD string? Okay. That's normal. You don't know that because I never explained. So, if you see anything with STD in C, that means it's a standard. It's like STD in C program we call STDIO or STD lib. But anything to do with STD means it's a standard. C++ class that's provided to you. STD colon colon string is a particular class called string class. It's a string class, but for C programmer here, I mean, how do you define string in C++? No, sorry, in C. How do you define in C? Yes. Character star. How about you? A different answer? No, that's the const is different, different way. It's a constant string. So in C, you want to define a string is either character star or unsigned character star. Either one of the way, it's fine. Character star, unsigned character star. I mean, most people probably don't bother to say what's unsigned and assigned, but uh, my experience usually unsigned is, seems to be more uh, general in that, in that sense. So, Essentially, C plus plus string, sorry, C string is just a string ended with backslash zero. It's a terminator. But C plus plus string, they actually put a lot of wrapper around the C string, C star. So I'm actually going to spend one class talk about string class or the standard class, including string. I'll do it later, but to answer your question, it is a, a standard class. It's just like a string. It's a variable string. Okay. It's, has, it's a similar to character star in C, but it has more functionality. Excellent question. Okay. So what other, uh, did I answer all your questions or is it just part of it? That's it. Okay, good. Okay. Any other question? Yes. Okay. Um, it, it has, okay, that's a great question because talk about abstraction. So uh, I, I think that's, that's, a, that's an excellent question. I'd like to spend some time. So it happens, of course, it's code reusing. I'm just reusing the, the code. But it's more important, I think, is the top reason to capture the relationship. So let me give you an example. If I don't use inheritance, I have a group of objects for teacher, I have a group of objects for student, I have a group of objects for staff. They're not really related to each other, they're just different objects with three different classes. So right now, assume me, I want to send a message to alert all the member of these names. Um, say today we have a high wind, be careful. And the thing is that I don't have to send to, oh, teacher, send to student, send to staff. What I did is I just send a message to all the community members. So it give, give me the abstraction. When you have that tree, it actually let me know when I want to interact with the system, which level in the class hierarchy I should interact with. Okay. 
And so that, that is essentially the power of abstract. It, it actually tell you what they are related and also give you a better way to address to a particular group of people that you choose. Yeah. And later when we realize what is a virtual function, this advantage becomes even clearer. Okay. Okay, so, so now we should take a look at this three question. This is more or less capture what we just talked about. I hope you now understand you're okay to start to write your first uh, inheritance program. The first one is, well, how do I actually define a derived class? And also how do I actually create its objects? So for define, I can show you it's a column, public, super class, whatever, box or whatever. That's how you define. And how do you create the object? The only thing you really need to worry about is the constructor. At this moment, at least the constructor. Later, we'll worry about something uh, more complicated like a virtual function, but now it's just call the object. But then in the constructor, you have to, uh, know how to create the object. Okay, so how do you access, the second question, how do you actually access the parent class from the derived? We learned a keyword called protected. If you have the protected, then you have the assets. If you don't want the child class to access, you can put it in the protected. And um, how to interface with objects under the class hierarchy, that's the big tree. So how do you access to that? You actually decide how, which one you want to address. And by the way, there is a mechanism called casting. So, okay, I, I probably should use an example, but I'm actually going to just use this as an example. So if I have an object called Carter, if I have an object which is created as a Carter, I can actually convert this Carter object to a box object. How do I do that? Just cast it as a box. So you have a reference to casting. So in C program, we do a lot of casting. We change the, uh, the type from one type to the other. But with inheritance, you can actually cast it to upgrade that. Okay. The last thing, because I'm, I'm done, I'm running out of time, but I want to just tell you this picture to, and remember, we say when you inherit, you have to say class, carton, column, public, box, right? That keyword box, public. But basically, you actually can specify public, protected, or private. So if it's a public, then the protected will be protected, the public will be public. And in the Protected, if you define the inheritance as protected, then basically the most protected public from the parent class will be protected. If you define it as private, then everything will be private as a, as a child class. That's, that's the only difference in this group. Okay? All right. I will just remind you that today's discussion, I'm going to spend the whole time talking about homework too. I will show you the demo and show you the detail. So today is important. If you can make it, you should make it to uh, for homework too. Um,